Okay, so the topic of this video today is going to be on one of the categories of organic molecules called nucleic acids. Now, just to refresh our memory, here are the organic molecule categories, all of them, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. I have a separate video for each of these, but this video specifically looks at nucleic acids. So let's get started. So you're often going to hear nucleic acids, such as DNA, being compared to a blueprint. Well, here's a blueprint of a boat. You know, a blueprint is a construction manual, basically. If you have an engineering background, you could follow this blueprint and construct a boat. Well, nucleic acids are instructions as well. They are instructions, they're coded instructions, and they tell your cells, and particularly they tell your ribosomes, which are a part of your cell, they tell your ribosomes to build proteins. Now, how that process actually works, we'll discuss in a separate video. If you want, you can search through my library. I have a video titled Translation, and in that video I discuss the process. But for now, we're just going over some, uh, some, uh, some general details. So proteins are what DNA and RNA, the nucleic acids, are blueprints to build. Eventually they will tell your cells how to build proteins. So there's two types of nucleic acids. I just mentioned these a moment ago, DNA and RNA. We're going to go into more details on each of them in a few moments. But uh, you can see from the picture that DNA is what we call a double helix, and RNA is simply a single strand. More on, more on these details in a few moments. Well, as I've said with all the other organic molecule videos, nucleic acids are, are, are an organic molecule and they're made from smaller organic molecules. So a monomer is a small part of an organic molecule and so the monomer of a nucleic acid is what is called a nucleotide. But when one nucleotide bonds with another, with another, with another, it makes a larger object called a nucleic acid. So monomers bond to make polymers. And in the world of nucleic acids, the monomer is called a nucleotide and the polymer is a nucleic acid. So when we look at the monomer called a nucleic acid in a little more detail. You know, what's a nucleotide? Well, it's a monomer of a nucleic acid, but let's look at the molecular structure in a little more detail. If we kind of just isolate one nucleic, or excuse me, if we isolate one nucleotide and then zoom on in, we'll often uh, see a, 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 a very simplistic diagram or drawing that kind of looks like this. So there are three parts to the structure of a nucleotide. You're often going to see a pentagon shaped uh, symbol and that represents the sugar molecule. Now here in the bottom picture this is the actual molecular formula of the sugar that makes up DNA. Now I hope you can see why it's often just kind of shown as a pentagon in various diagrams that you might see. Another part labeled P in the top picture is called the phosphate group. And in the bottom picture, you can see why it's called the phosphate group. First of all, group because there's a group of atoms, and phosphate because it's centered around phosphorus. And so it's very, very often in diagrams online, in textbooks, even in this presentation, you're going to see simply uh, the phosphate group shown as just a circle. And in the top picture, you can see it's just a black circle with the letter P in it. And then we come to the unique portion of a nucleotide. Uh, the, the final part of a nucleotide is made up of a nitrogen base. Now, there are four possible nitrogen bases, and you can see the letter abbreviations for each. So right now, with the, in the green box, in the top right-hand corner, there's a letter A. That stands for a molecule called adenine. There's three other nitrogen bases. There is a nitrogen base labeled T, which stands for thiamine. There's a nitrogen base labeled C, which stands for cytosine. There's a nitrogen base labeled G, which stands for guanine. In fact, uh, there's actually a fifth nitrogen base called uracil, with stand, with, abbreviated with the letter U, but that's an RNA nucleotide. We'll talk about that later. The four that you see right here, these are DNA nucleotides. And so uh, what we're going to show you a moment, or what I showed you earlier with the simplistic orange circles connecting to one another, and here's a nucleotide. Nucleotides combine to make larger polymers. Remember, the polymer is called a nucleic acid. So one nucleotide will bond with a wide variety of others to make a, a larger nucleic acid. 
So if we were in class, I would give you a minute to talk with your neighbor and try to work out these five questions. You know, at home right now, pause the video and I'm going to go over these answers in three, two, one. Okay, so now that you've had time to pause the video and try to answer these on your own, question number one, how many nucleotides are pictured? Well, if you just count the A's, T's, C's, and G's, I hope you see there are six of them. Number two, all total, what would this long chain of nucleotides be called? Well, a whole collection of nucleotides is called a nucleic acid. Number three, name the blue-shaped pentagon molecule. Well, that typically, the pentagon-shaped molecule is going to be the sugar. There's three parts to a nucleotide, a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base. The pentagon-shaped one is going to be the sugar. Number four, what are these individual monomers called? The individual um, uh, parts the six individual parts that make up the overall nucleic acid. Well, there's a clue in number one. It says how many nucleotides are pictured. Well, those individual monomers are called nucleotides. And number five, what will these instructions be used to create? Nucleic acids in general are instructions to tell your cells how to build a protein. So let's move on. So when we look at specifically the nucleic acid called DNA, we'll talk about RNA in a few moments, but DNA in particular, you're going to often hear the shape called a double helix. And in the animation, a helix simply means like a spiral staircase, a spiral uh, arrangement of a spiral ladder, if you imagine that in your mind. And so double because there's going to be two strands of nucleotides, a strand on the left, a strand on the right. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So here is a simplistic drawing of a strand of nucleotides on the left and a strand of nucleotides on the right. This is what we mean by the double in the word double helix. Now I don't have in this uh, in this drawing here they're they're not twisted that uh, you know that'd be a little too tricky to do with with you know PowerPoint but you can see the double part of a double helix. And what holds those two strands together. What holds the left strand, what holds the right strand together are what are called hydrogen bonds. There's a hydrogen bond in between the C and the G on top. There's a hydrogen bond in between the A and the T on top and so on as you go down. And so one of the things that was being uncovered in the early part of the 1900s was the structure of DNA. And there was a scientist, an Austrian scientist by the name of Erwin Shargaff, who discovered that the amount of adenine was always equal to the amount of thymine. And for years, we didn't really know why, but now we do. The reason the amount of adenine A is equal to the amount of thymine T is because they pair with one another. And the second uh, observation that Erwin Chargaff noticed was that the amount of G for guanine was always equal to the amount of C for cytosine. And for years, we didn't really understand why. And then it was discovered that guanine and cytosine, G and C, were bonded together. So that's why they were always appearing in equal numbers. So when we look at this picture again, we can see from top to bottom, anytime there's a C on the left, there's a G on the right. Anytime there's an A on the left, there's a T on the right. A pairs with T, C pairs with G. These are called Charga Chargaff's rule. And so um, one thing I also want to mention is that DNA is made, uh, genes, excuse me, genes are made of DNA. I'm sure you've heard of genes. If you studied genetics, you studied, you know, dominant genes and recessive genes and autosomal dominance, autosomal recessive. And well, so a gene is a portion. It's a small chunk of DNA that will eventually tell your cell, your ribosome in your cell, how to make a protein. So for instance, here's a big chain of DNA in this picture. For instance, let me just highlight that small area right there. Pretend that's gene A. That combination of A, T, C's, and G's, those com that combination of A's, T's, C's, and G's will ultimately tell your ribosomes how to make a protein. For instance, maybe that sequence right there uh, tells your ribosome how to make a protein called hemoglobin. You know, here's another gene that I just highlighted, gene B. That little sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's eventually holds the, uh, the instructions to make a protein called keratin. And the ribosome will receive these instructions then make a, and make the protein called keratin. And the last example, let's highlight gene C. So that chunk of DNA right there pretend is gene C. See, you can see that some genes are bigger, some genes are smaller. 
and so pretend that gene C is uh, is the code, the set of instructions that eventually will tell your ribosome to make a protein called collagen. So how the ribosome makes a protein is not something we're going to discuss in this video, but if you want to look through my library of videos, it's a process called translation. I have a video on that you can check out at your convenience. So if we just kind of take a stand back for a moment and you know, pause the video and try to answer this question, how many nucleotides do you see in this picture? I'm going to show the answer in three, two, one. So a nucleotide, remember, is one combination of a sugar, phosphate, and nitrogen base. And so I just highlighted the answer. There's 12 of them. There's six on the left connected by hydrogen bonds to six on the right. So what about the other kind of nucleic acid, ribonucleic acid? Well, ribonucleic acid from the picture you can see is a bit different from DNA. DNA, if you recall, is the double helix, the twisted spiral shaped staircase. RNA isn't, it's a single chain of nucle uh, nucleotides. And so it's still a combination of nucleotides. So remember, a nucleotide is a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base. But notice how there is a different nitrogen base. There's still A for adenine, and C for cytosine, and G for guanine. But in the world of RNA, there is no T for thymine. You have a, ni a different nitrogen base. The letter U stands for the nitrogen base by the name of uric. And so, in general, this is very in general here, the, the, the general purpose of RNA is to deliver information from, from a DNA molecule to a ribosome. On the left is a DNA helix. And remember we said that DNA is the instructions to build a protein. Well, the problem is that the ribosome is the actual physical builder of the protein. So that in, the instructions of DNA has to somehow get to the ribosome. The ribosome cannot begin building a protein until it has the instructions. So the molecule that goes in between the two is a type of RNA by the name of messenger RNA. So messenger RNA will copy a piece of the instructions of DNA take it over to the ribosome. And once the ribosome has the instructions, then the ribosome can live up to its job. The job of a ribosome is to build proteins and then release the proteins to wherever they are needed. So that's a very quick, simplistic uh, overview of what, uh, of what RNA does. Again, we'll, we'll go into more of this in detail later on in the school year in another video. So how do nucleotides bond together? How does, a, a nucle how does one nucleotide on top bond to a nucleotide on the bottom? How do small molecules bond to make larger molecules? I hope you know that's the answer of dehydration synthesis. Watch this. In a dehydration synthesis reaction, I've highlighted H2O in red just so it stands out more visually. So here we have two nucleotides. So when they're bonded together like this, Water will be removed, and with the help of enzymes, those bonds will be broken, and the two nucleotides will bond together with one another. So again, dehydration synthesis is a way to, and is is a way there that larger molecules are built up from smaller molecules, and in the process, water is removed. So kind of the opposite. Here we have a larger nucleic acid. What process would break these apart? The answer I hope you know is hydrolysis. We've talked about dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis in other videos. So hydrolysis simply means the addition of water. Hydro implies water. Lysis is a word that simply means to break. So water and various enzymes are going to help to break the bonds that are holding those two nucleic acids together. And so there you have a hydrolysis reaction where, uh, where the two individual nucleotides have been separated. So here we have a kind of just a summary table. You know, if we were in class, one minute, discuss these with your neighbor. Try to figure out what word goes in box A, B, C, D, and E. Pause the video. Think about it. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So if you've watched these videos in order, nucleic acids are the final uh, organic molecule that we're going to discuss. So here's a, just a summary table. The monomer of a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. The polymer of a carbohydrate is called a polysaccharide. 
In proteins, the monomer of a protein is called an amino acid. In lipids, the monomer of a lipid, it's actually two. Fatty acids are one of the monomers, as is the molecule called glycerol. A fatty acid and a glycerol bond to make a lipid, which is the polymer. And the last one, which is what we discussed in this video today, a nucleotide is the monomer, and a bunch of nucleotides bond to make a polymer by the name of a nucleic acid. So there you have it. If you're one of my students, you know, pause the video and try to answer these on a separate sheet of paper. I'd be happy to check your answers before school or after school. Good luck.